Ba -ba -ba. Hey everybody, welcome to my new Last Outrider video. This is a special video. I'm going to call it the opinion video. I'm not going to read fluff, but I will give you some facts about GW that you probably don't know. In real life, the common question was, what do I think of Age of Sigmar? I don't even call it Warhammer anymore. I tell people. I've just started calling it Age of Sigmar because I think it's a completely new entity. And that's fine. Why did they do it? They did it because it's time. It needs to be done. Let me share some information with you about GW itself, and that might help you understand what they do. First of all, when I think about why GW does something, you have to assume the correct perspective. I think about what would the CEO of GW do? And then I take my best idea and I ignore it. Then I take my second best idea and I ignore that. By the time I get down to my fourth or fifth idea, I start understanding what GW does. But that's not just DW. That's pretty much all companies, mostly because business itself kind of has a hard limit on intellectual capability you know you, you only only somebody so smart wants to be a CEO and then when you get past that you're like yeah 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 there there are better things to do with your time so <clears throat> GW if you don't know got a new CEO at uh, January 1st of 2015 this year um, who is it? What's his name? Roundtree, I think. Mr. Roundtree took over but from, uh, from Tim Kirby, uh, which most companies are doing now, and I'm going to tell you why. We're at a time of a generational shift. I believe the board of directors, the average age on the board of directors at GW, or inactive directors, or whatever they call them, is 65 plus right? We're talking baby boomers, or if you're out of the United States, we're talking previous generation, okay? MBA, uh, economics students, people like that. Uh, Roundtree came in, he's 44 years old, so we're finally getting into a digital generation person, somebody who actually used a computer when he was a kid, I hope, at 44. Um... Yeah, I'm thinking everybody's over 45. You had Kirby, he's 65. C.J. Wyatt, 71. Uh, Donaldson, 61. Oh, wait, Odell. Uh, O'Donnell, or Odell, or Donald. Sorry, he's he, he would be 41. So that, oh, 44, sorry. So you're looking at, look at the management of GW. And ask yourself, what type of game... Would you expect made by people uh, who grew up in the 60s? And, and that's what you get. Now they've decided to bring in the next generation, so you're going to have a whole bunch of 40s-year-olds running it, and they're going to modernize it, a little generational shift, and they're doing it exactly as I would expect it to be done. Now, what would I expect to be done? As I said, take the fourth best idea, and that's probably what you're going to go with. You're going to look at popular culture. You're going to look at the popular culture that was used to create the original armies and races of Rogue Trader back in the 80s and 90s. And you're going to update that to the popular images of the thousands, the 2015s and 2020s. That's what they did. The Tyranids. The original uh, storyline for the Tyranids came from a TV show slash comic book series called Alien Nation. Do you know it? Probably not. That's why in the 90s they shifted it from Alien Nation to just Alien and the Alien Trilogy, which is fine. I understand that. So they're just doing the same thing. Uh, from what I can tell, when I read the, the fluff about malice and being a core of a planet and everything like that, the first thing that popped into my head is they're going Transformers. Many people don't know the Transformer history, 
or or their philo storyline, I should say, philosophy about how the universe runs is what I call it. Their mythology. So let me tell it to you, and we will see if this is what you'll end up finding out in Games Workshop over the next year. You had two planets. The core of the planet was sentient. One was called Primus. And when I started seeing the word prime being used in the Astra Militarum Codex and prime being used now in, in, in the former fantasy battle universe, I don't think that's a mistake. Transformers is one of those modern, iconic storylines that are out there, and I would have been surprised from a profit standpoint if GW didn't try to incorporate the Transformer concept into the game, which didn't exist in 40K or Fantasy Battle before. There was no robots in disguise. It wasn't even possible in their storyline. So you have to create a storyline that makes it possible. That's the first thing that I would see them doing. Um, so they have. You now have Primus, which was the core of Cybertron, and he used the AllSpark to create other life forms based upon his template, its template. You had another planet, and also, you know, Primus called the Lightbringer at the Well of Souls, creating both Autobot and Decepticons. So it's morally neutral from that standpoint. And then you had a Unicron, Primus's um, older brother if you will, at the core of another planet, Earth. Hello! And the anti-spark, I guess you would call it, is the core of the life on that planet. Humans, hi, which is why we're so chaotic and generally evil versus life on, on Cybertron, I'm guessing. I see that being wrapped up into this, into the new 40k Age of Sigmar universe. That's going to be the core. There was also a transcendent being called the One, which created Primus and Unicron and placed them into the physical reality, which is the multiverse. We're going to get something like that. You got these two poles, which are going to be fighting each other, and they create avatars of themselves on their specific worlds in the mortal realms, if you want, while still having a transcendent immortal realm. That's what I see. That's the Transformers universe, and I think you're going to get something similar to that in Age of Sigmar, because that's the modern main... Because it brings Transformers to the game. You don't need any other reason past that. So look at what else is out there that's popular. Look at modern culture. Find modern storylines in sci-fi and fantasy that are not represented in 40K in the Warhammer universe, and you're going to see those being brought into the game somehow. Look at the popular games right now. Pushing trays with little fantasy figures in fantasy battle, that was wargaming from the 70s and the 80s. We're not there anymore. In fact, it's pretty hard to think of any gaming on the tables at this point in time. So they're going to come up with something that can fit in the modern age. You had Hero Clicks, Mage Knight, even they're having difficulty. A War Machine is working. A small, compact game that doesn't take a lot of figures, doesn't take a lot of painting, doesn't take a lot of hobbying. We've kind of moved past that culturally. That you can play, sit down and play. And that's what I see. It's going to be something like that. A GURPS slash War Machine with a mythology taken from current day sci-fi slash fantasy fiction. That's the future of GW. And probably in another 50 years, if there's still a royal family, they might make it HMS Warhammer slash Age of Sigmar when it actually becomes a British um, <laughs> 
cultural icon, if you will. That's the future I see. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing here to get angry about that I can see. You know, nobody's stopping anybody from playing anything they want any way they want. In fact, that's going to become the hallmark of the game. Create your little pocket universe in which Warhammer 7th edition or 8th edition is still the rule. Enjoy. Knock yourself out. Other than that, I hope the game continues to be... I'm going to use the word profitable so that it still continues to exist. Or if it isn't, then I hope they turn it over into open source so that, which it will become anyway, you know, eventually, because everything is going down that path. You know, the, the role of business about 20 years from now is going to be uh, open source when commerce, as we understand it, is no longer shackled by economic philosophy and simply becomes data based driven the exchange of products and services based upon data instead of a philosophy of commerce i could go on but i like to keep my videos short if you have questions about what i said you can ask and i'll try to make other one, uh, videos to answer them but really this is all highly predictable it's not much of a surprise for me, and it shouldn't be for anybody else, and nobody is stopping you from playing any game any way you want to do it or making any fantasy storyline that you want to make up. And you should be happy doing that. Don't be a sheep. Don't wait for somebody to write a book for you to agree with and then say, this is my game. Create your own and be happy. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>